We talked about uh, Norman and how up to now he'd been uh, sort of almost shadowy figure in the, in the tale of Jeremy Thorpe. Um, it was incredibly impactful to see him at the, at the very end. Was that always what you had in mind? Did you always intend to, to, to bleed through to the real Yes, the once real I met him in his house and... Uh, Yes, I suppose I thought of it there and then. I remember we drove away saying, we should have shot that then. Um, yeah, I think, I think he is the survivor. It, it, everyone else has passed away and he is the great survivor of the story and I can't imagine another note to end on, really. Yeah. And I think it's been cathartic for him. I think no one's well, heard him. No, no, he's no. been putting his hand up for so many years saying, this happened to me, and no one has believed him. And suddenly, with this story, he was, he was very wary when we first went down to see him. And at first, he didn't really want to talk about Jeremy Thorpe. And all the way through, he kind of maintained, oh, I, I hated Jeremy, and I didn't love him, and he didn't love me. And then when we went down to show him the episodes, when we got to the episode three, and that moment with Carmen and Jeremy, when Carmen says, why Norman? And Jeremy says, because I, he was the best. Norman, the real Norman broke down, like properly broke down. No, it wasn't, they weren't fake tears. He was properly broken and you, you put your arm around him and oh. he, it was cathartic. And I spoke to him, I speak to him a lot. He's love, I, I love him. Um, <laughs> Is he, it too much? Are you worried now? <laughs> so nice. um, he, uh, I spoke to him last week and he said, uh, he said he's found it cathartic that finally he's been heard. And you said to me when we came out the edit uh, at the end and you said, We've made him a little bit of a hero, this man yes, that no one's yeah, listened I, to. I would agree. Yeah. He's also got the best gossip in the world that you <laughs> <laughs> cannot possibly say your stories about those two famous <laughs> actresses having lesbian sex on board a plane. Aeroplane moves. Just, <laughs> just brilliant. Brilliant. He's got a lot of I can't make that name. <laughs> I, I, I want you to make it Mark. next, and I want one. Hugh to be in it, in a, in a masterclass <laughs> of inhabiting it. You know. The truth is that he himself, he himself contains the history of homosexuality and the change in the law, the change in attitudes. It's all expressed through him. He's so much a, fig uh, he's so much a figure from before uh, the, the law, the, before the law was reformed. He's so much a figure from the late 50s and early 60s, mm. and then to have got to here, it's all there, it's all in, it's all in him. And, and waiting that long to, to feel loved. To and to have been that out in the 60s. It's, I mean, that's where the damage comes from and that's where the heroism comes from. They're both the same thing in the end. Um, it's, it's an extraordinary act. And not, not out in Soho. You could be Quentin yeah. Crisp, I think, walking down the street and say, well, that's hard work. But, um, Try but it in to Taunton. be in Devon, <laughs> yeah. sitting in a pub in Devon, being out and gay, that's tricky now, I would think. And uh, then, that's an extraordinary man. Truly extraordinary. Yeah. We, we actually have a clip, the Carmen clip that, that, that oh, you yeah. talked about. Let's, let's have a look at that. Why? I have a particular interest between you and me. I've been there with men. Before I was married, while I was married, next week. So I know what it's like. The stink of them, the sweat, the joy. So I wonder. Why a man with your power and privilege should choose him? Except I did not have a relationship with Norman Scott. Jeremy, I kept you off the witness stand to save your life. The prosecution had evidence. They had men from the pubs, men from the streets, men who know you. All of them liars. And I know those men. I know they last for one night. But with Norman Scott, it went on for years. It was different. You wrote to him. You helped him. You loved him. Why that man? Well, I would imagine... I can only speculate. If you do know those men, George, then you know those knights. <laughs> and 
do know how those knights can end. Touch me, dirty queer! Fuck! Touch me! Oh, no, oh, take it, take it, just take it! Given those men, it may be, I suppose, one could imagine that Norman Scott was the best. So good. It's beautiful, wonderful. Because what I love about that is just at that point in the drama, you get a sense of. Jeremy's vulnerability, how he also has been party to abusive situations and had his own levels of, of damage. Um, this whole piece is a, a, a sort of meditation on, on power, and that's why I think it feels so incredibly relevant. Were you aware of that as you were working at it, that you were making, albeit a period piece, of something that had real contemporary bite to it? I don't well, honestly yeah. think so. Or well, I didn't. <laughs> I mean... Um, People would say, oh, it's very relevant. And I thought, well, I, what, why? What is relevant about it? But I, I, I mean, I assume I'm wrong because it had such an impact. The relevance I found, if one had to thrash around for an answer to your question, is... <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose we're here for... Um, <laughs> yeah, that is our remit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is simply that um, a big part of... Thorpe and of, of what he did was narcissism. And uh, in my, the last six years of my life, doing the whole hacked off thing and, and coming into contact with a lot, a lot of politicians all the time, um, it became very clear to me that that, whoever said it, got it right when they said that politics is show business for the ugly. They are, uh, <laughs> the egos and the narcissism amongst politicians mm. is as great, if not worse, than anything I've come across uh, in m show business. And, uh, and this was a great motivation of, uh, of thought, but it, it's absolute great white shark determination to get what you want, and mm. everything else falls by the wayside. Uh, and, and it is. And, and I still see people like I, I still see people like that, you know. I mean, I, you can see it going on in politics right at this moment. But careers come first. And the country comes, you know, sixth or something. <laughs> and yeah, it is, I yeah. mean, I think you don't walk around on set going, is this relevant? Is this relevant? Of it's course, just, of course. If it's good, it's relevant in the end. But in terms of the day we had our very first meeting about it, our first lunch, uh, Keith Vaz had been exposed in Parliament as sleeping with rent boys by pretending to be a washing machine salesman. It's, like, <laughs> you know, so it's just as mad as it ever was. And actually, you know, there's Jeremy Thorpe setting out to murder a man while holding on to power. Nowadays, they're holding on to power and murdering the entire fucking country. So it's like, it's a small bit compared to what's going on. It's well, yes, and it is, it is the sort of cabal of supposedly metropolitan elite and the, you know, sort of rural North Devon, sort of. <laughs> and once again, you know, those, we, we shouldn't be pitted against one another, but this, in, in, in this particular piece, feels like there's Jeremy in the countryside, and then there's Jeremy in the heart of power and in Westminster, where he obviously, as you say, narcissistically wants to climb the greasy pole to prime ministership, uh, come what may, and will do anything to, to, to sort of kick people into touch, you get into his, his way.